This video has been brought to you by my book, A Winner Is You. Check it out in the description below. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video game boxes. And the games we're going to talk about today are the Dragon Quest series on the Super Famicom. So we're going to start with Dragon Quest 1 and 2. Dragon Quest 3. Dragon Quest 5. Dragon Quest 6, and as a bonus, Tornico's Mystery Dungeon. All right, everybody, here are the Dragon Quest Super Famicom games here in their boxes, and we shall start with Dragon Quest 1 and 2. All right, guys, so here's Dragon Quest 1 and 2 in the front. Here's the side, other side, the bottom, and the top. And here is the back with the really, really cool art. Now, this box isn't exactly in the best condition, so yeah, look at that. It's a bit wrinkled on the top and shows a bit of damage. All right, so let us open the box and see what's inside. All right, so here are the contents of what's inside the box. Here's the game holder. Here is the Super Famicom cartridge. Here's the back. And here is the manual. So let us see if this manual has like super cool Akira Toriyama art. I really like these redrawings of the Dragon Quest II characters because they look a lot tougher here. Alright, table of contents. Now here is Alephgard from Dragon Quest. Original Dragon Quest art. And here's the Dragon Quest II world. Original Dragon Quest II art. Uh, basic controls. You know, here's some monster designs. Here's the Golem, the Chimera. Full color booklet, man. That is awesome. All right, some more monster art. You know, some basic uh, gameplay stuff. Some cool weapons and armor. And some really, really awesome redrawn art. Now the Prince of Canock looks like all badass and shit. Now see, look at him, man. See, he's like really cool here. Very, 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 very cool art. And completely updated for the 90s. Here's some enemies. And that is pretty much it for Dragon Quest 1 and 2. So now let us check out what's inside the cartridge. All right, so I have the Dragon Quest 1 and 2 cart in my Super Nintendo. The tabs have been removed, so let us try it out. All right, everybody, starting up the Dragon Quest 1 and 2 Super Nintendo cartridge, or Super Famicom cartridge. We went through all the names. Akira Toriyama, Koichi Sugiyama. Yeah, yeah, Yuji Horii's name already passed. Dragon Quest 1 and 2. So let us start out. Dragon Quest 1. There's the enhanced Dragon Quest logo for the Super Famicom. Oh, that sounds beautiful, man. That sounds beautiful. Okay, so let's see where the save data is. Okay, we only have one save data, sadly. So let's see where we're at. We're at level one. All right, yeah, we've barely started this game at all, man. Wow. Okay, well. Just gotta get past all the text. Twenty gold. All right, so that's probably it for the Dragon Quest One on Super Famicom. Let's try out Dragon Quest Two. All right, so now let us start off with Dragon Quest Two. Dragon Quest Two.
All right, so it doesn't look like there's any save data. So we'll start it with ah. Uh... All right, so we get the prologue with the sky, which was added into this version, and there's Moonbrook Castle. Yeah, so they're talking about how the descendant of Roto defeated the Dragon Lord. Well, you know, you can just see the translated version online. So a hundred years have passed now. Moonbrook Castle. Moonbrook. All right, so now we know how this intro goes. So basically, let us go now on to Dragon Quest Three. All right, guys, so here's Dragon Quest Three Remake for the Super Famicom. This is the front of the box. Very, very cool redrawn art by Toriyama. Erdrick looks a lot tougher here. Here is the side. Other side. Here's the bottom. Here's the top. And here is the back. Very, very similar to the Famicom box where you see all the classes. And this box is actually in pretty good condition in comparison to the Dragon Quest 1 and 2. So let us check what's inside. Alright, so Dragon Quest 3 comes with a lot more stuff and I even have the original cartridge in plastic. And here is an AC adapter brochure, here's the manual, and here is a registration card. Let's see what's on the other side. Yep. Alright, let's see the manual to see if there's any super cool Toriyama art that we haven't seen before. And yeah, this manual is in really, really pristine condition. Here's the world. And then here's the fight with Ortega and the, at the beginning. Here are all the classes and you get to see what the female hero actually looks like. Very, very, very awesome. Yeah, I would have to say like this is the original art on steroids. And here's the sages. Alright, some gameplay stuff. Some really, really cool art. Not trying to grab this one page. And more cool art. Some gameplay stuff. Oh, actually, let's take a look at that. And I see they go to the end and they feel a lot better. So here is more awesome art. There, there are the heroes at the bar. Find some items. And just more gameplay stuff. Oh, here's some cool art. Fighting all those heel slimes. <laughs> Boomerang. So this is a little hard to hold with just one hand. <laughs> level one, level one, level one. Magic. Here's Ramya. You hear that heavenly flight theme? Right here's the casino. And they actually have Sugoroku in this game. This is the first game that Sugoroku appeared in. Some super badass enemy art. So some super badass art of the Monster Arena. Some awesome items. 
Some awesome weapons and armor. And some more awesome work. Ooh, what is this? Goo Goo Gaga. <laughs> Oh wow, so this looks like a class leveling chart, which is really cool. Awesome. Oh, and there's a soundtrack. Which I actually have. And join the Dragon Quest fan club run by Sack Chief. And that's the back, so now let us see what is on the cartridge. All right, so I have the Dragon Quest 3 cartridge in my Super Nintendo, so let us try it out. Dragon Quest 3. Yuji Hori. Oh man, so we're playing the Dragon Quest 3 Super Famicom cart. There's the town of Aliahan. You're talking about Ortega. There it is, man. The logo. Oh my god. Looks so beautiful on the Super Famicom. Epic. Oh man, look at that epic opening right there. You see the world in the background. God, they added so much to this. It's amazing. Alright, so let's check out the save data. Alright, level 32. I think they're both the same. They're located at Aliahan. Yeah, we have a pretty long way to go before we can actually do anything and gain more experience. Oh wow, you walk really fast in the Super Famicom version. So we are in Alihan Castle. Let's go outside real quick. Alright, so let's see where we can actually uh, go. So Rura... Yeah, so it looks like I can only transport to places here around the normal world. But we have Ramia though. Holy. Well, mode 7 Ramia. Wow, this is crazy. Look at that. So you press R, you get to see the entire world map. Oh man, I really want to play through this version. I really, really want to play through this version. But anyways guys, now let us move on to the other Dragon Quest games. Alright guys, so this is one of my personal favorite games in the series, Dragon Quest V. And this is the original Super Famicom version. And you know, the box has seen better days. This is not in that great of condition. You can't tell by looking at it here in the video, but yeah. Okay, so here's the front. Here's the side. Other side. Oh man, so you see the bottom, you know, this is this is like where some tape used to be. Here's the top, it doesn't look that great. Uh, so here's the back, so that's Pancras, aka Pappas. Here's Bianca. Then there's the hero and Bianca all grown up. So I gotta be very, very delicate with this box, so let us see what's inside. Alright guys, so here's what's inside the box. It doesn't come with a lot of stuff, and this holder feels like it's gonna come apart at any moment. See, look at that. Ugh, it's so old. It's like nearly 30 years old. Here's the cartridge. Then here's the manual. So let us see if there's awesome Toriyama art. And the manual is actually in better condition than everything here. Alright, so this is my favorite of the Zenithian trilogy. There's the map. All of the awesome art. Yeah, there you go. Gameplay mechanics. Yeah, what I like about the Dragon Quest V manual is there is so much art in it that's not in any of the official guidebooks. And you can only find this art here in the manual. And you can probably read scans of this manual over at the Dragon's Den. But I'm showing you, but I'm showing you guys this thing raw. I mean, it's just so different having the actual manual in your hands, you know? Monster recruiting, there's Bianca. Who I think is the best waifu. 
Weapons and armor. More weapons and armor. And man, this page has a lot of awesome art, and this page too. So much awesome art in this, man. Ah, I wish I could just scan these or something. Oh, Bianca's charbroiling a enemy. Oh my god, Bianca looks all drunk here. <laughs> or bedazzled. Slime uppercut! <laughs> and buddy buddy with the monsters. Because Dragon Quest V did introduce, you know, recruiting monsters into your party. That's why this game is so friggin' amazing. Oh, look at that poor slime. That is so cool. You see young Hero and young Bianca on the Super Famicom. Power Bianca. So here are advertisements for the original Dragon Quest games on the Famicom. Alright, so now let us see what is on the cartridge. Alright, so I have the Dragon Quest V cartridge in my Super Nintendo, so let us check it out. Enix presents Armor Project. We're playing the Dragon Quest V Super Famicom cart. Bird Studio. Oh my god. Koichi Sugiyama. Chunsoft in Dragon Quest V. All right, so we have one at level five, one at level forty, and one at level forty-two. Let us check out the one at level five. All right, so yeah, we are starting pretty close to the beginning with the hero and Bianca. Oh, what are these kids doing? Are they tickling poor Percy? Hey, Percy. Alright, so it looks like this is pretty good. Looks like we're not allowed to leave town, so let us check out the other data. Alright, so now let us check out the data at level 40. Alright, so we are grown up, and I have my son and my wife. We are at the, here's the casino hall. I have no idea where I am right now. Uh, let's try to find Rura. See where the last location takes us? Oh, right at the end of the game. Holy crap, we are at the end of Dragon Quest V. Oh man, that's crazy. Awesome. Alright, so now let us check out the last data. Okay, so the last data is at level 42. Alright, apparently we're somewhere else and now I have my daughter and Bianca. Okay, so now let us check our rural locations. So it looks like I can't warp to the final dungeon quite yet. Oh, actually I can! I just had one less zoom location. Alright, cool, so my Dragon Quest V cartridge does have data at the end of the game. Awesome, so now let us move on to Dragon Quest VI. Alright, so here is Dragon Quest VI for the Super Famicom. The box is definitely in better condition than the Dragon Quest V one, so here is the front. Here's the side. Other side. Bottom. The top. And here is the back. Alright, so now let us take a look at what's inside. 
All right, so Dragon Quest VI actually comes with something extra. It comes with a map. So let's check out this map because, you know, the Japanese games don't really come with maps in comparison to the U.S. games. So it's a little hard to unfold this with just one hand. And the map is a little ripped, so I got to really be careful with it. All right, I'm uh, trying to get this unraveled here. Okay. All right, here we go. So... This is the map of both worlds of Dragon Quest VI. Now, you don't get any locations because, you know, they want to keep things like a mystery. So anyways, let us take a look at the manual to see all the cool Toriyama art. So here's the front, here's the back. Nothing too special in the back. Yeah, see, with the Super Famicom manuals, they started making them more detailed and in color, and it's awesome. I see all your allies. There's Terry. Gameplay stuff. You know, here's some art of Ashlyn. Or Barbara in the Japanese version. See, this is a pretty cool picture. See, here are some more awesome pictures. There's Nevon. Here's you asleep. And here are some visual representations of the seeds and items. Weapons and armor. Ah, see, so look at you all decked out like that, huh? And there's some, and there's some casino stuff. Monster Arena, look at that badass slime. You know, he's seen some shit. Is some wagon art. Oh no, your hero is injured. Now he's ready to power up and go like Dragon Ball. Let us go, my friends. <laughs> More awesome gameplay stuff. Man, I really like the detail of the Super Famicom manuals. Sorry about the glare. The monsters are wearing some armor now. It's my buddy. He's having a beer with the monsters. Ah, see, so look at that class change. Ooh, what is this? Some more awesome art. Yeah, just a whole bunch of spell charts. Looking inside the pot. Ooh, some stationery. Also, there is a soundtrack, which I already have. All right, so now let us check what's on the cart. All right, so now I have the Dragon Quest VI cartridge in my Super Nintendo. Let us check it out. Enix presents Yuji Hori for Dragon Quest VI. Oh, okay, we do not have any save data. Let's start with this one then. All right, so this is kind of a blank cartridge for some reason. No save data at all. So we're back at the beginning of the game, you know, where we fight Murda. All right, there's Carver, or Hassan in Japanese. 
All right, so it looks like Dragon Quest VI starts off at the beginning of the game. There's no save data for the end, so let's move on to the final game. All right, guys, as an added bonus, I am also going to be including Tornico's Mystery Dungeon for the Super Famicom. It is technically a Dragon Quest game, so I am including it here. So here is the front. That's our man, Tornico, developed by Chunsop. So here is the sides. Here's the bottom, nothing interesting. Here's the top, and this box is in really, really, really good condition. Here's the back. For sale and use in Japan only. I am filming this in the US, so uh, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so now let us take a look at what's inside. All right, so here are the contents of the box. You know, here's the holder. Here's the cartridge, and here is the manual. So let us see the cool art, if there is any. All right, so let's open the, man the manual. There's our pal Tornico giving us a greeting. Oh, a lot of Tornico art, man. Oh, see, look at that, look at that. It's Tornico's family. Now hinting to Dragon Quest IV. Wow, this manual is chock full of awesome art. See, Tornico's is playing his own game. He probably sells consoles there too, but you can't see them when you actually play Dragon Quest IV. All right. Ah, there's Tornico ready for battle. Let's try. Completely in English. Because in Japan, you have to learn both English and Japanese. So here are some of the gameplay mechanics. I played a bit of this game and it's really cool and there is an English translation online. Ah, sorry about that. <laughs> Man, that is one thing about the Dragon Quest Super Famicom games. They just have super, super cool manuals with all the awesome art. stuff for your success I hope you're successful when you play this game see look at that stuff All right, so now we got some completely blue pages. See, there's Tornico dual wielding. Item, item. Some swords and shields. Ooh, you got bread in this game, nice. Here's some of the enemies. And there's the Tornico Orchestra. So I think this is probably an advertisement for a soundtrack. I'm trying to get that last page. Eh, nothing interesting. All right, so now let us see what is on the cartridge. All right, so now I have the Tornico Mystery Dungeon cart in my Super Nintendo. Let us check it out. All right, we are starting Tornico's Mystery Dungeon. Okay, that's pretty cool. A lot of coins. Okay, so now let us see. Okay, there's a save data for seven hours, one for 40, and one for 15. Let's see where the seven hour data is. Wow, cool. I'm just too lazy to translate any of this right now. So I've never played this before. I know there's a fan translation, so I'll definitely play that in the distant future. Okay, so I think this is the main gameplay. Whoa, 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 okay, whoa, 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 watch it, slug. Yeah, see, I'm punching you, I'm Tornico, man. Punch of justice. Okay, I see how this works. 
So it's a little like Zelda in a way, actually. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let's check out the other data. Okay, so now let us check out the 40-hour data. It's probably really powerful in this. I have no idea where I am right now. <laughs> like, this is my very, very first time playing this. And I'm playing it in raw Japanese, you know, just for recording for this video. Okay, so apparently there's no world map, there's just dungeons. Alright, so looking for some enemies. Oh, I can walk diagonally? I didn't know that. Yeah, this is like Dragon Quest Zelda before Rocket Slime. Oh wow, this is kind of cool in a way. Very interesting game. I like to play this in English sometime. Alright, now let us check out the last data. Alright, so now let us check out the data at 15 hours. Oh, I'm here at the dungeon and there's slimes already! I have a feeling that I'm gonna die really, really quickly in this game. If I come ill-prepared. Oh crap, I'm down to four, three... Oh, I died! Oh, that's kind of morbid looking. Oh, so there's like a high score here? Well, high gold score. <laughs> oh my god, they throw me out! That's hilarious! Yeah, I better play the English version of this. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'd like to play this game in full sometime. Alright everyone, since these were made in massive quantities, they aren't too expensive or too hard to find on eBay. Although Dragon Quest 3 for the Super Famicom might cost you a bit more than the rest. I pretty much paid about 20 bucks for all the games, but Dragon Quest 3 actually ran me for about 30 to 40. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to check out these other videos, and also make sure to follow me on social media and check out the official Battle Geek Plus website. Take care.